All right. Uh, did we get to the Townsend Acts yesterday? No. We're starting out with Townsend Acts. All right. So we're a little bit behind first block, which is pretty new for you guys, isn't it? Um, all right. So let's um, talk about the stamp back real fast. Stamp back was, everybody hated it. What type of tax was it? Internal. Internal. It was an internal tax. And um, we, the stamp back Congress, uh, right, the stamp back Congress is going to get together. And what are they going to try to enforce? Legally, what are they going to get to enforce? None. Yeah, but that comes from the Virginia results, right? Um, and who is enforcing our non-importation? Sons, Sons of Liberty. Sons of Liberty. All right. So now we get um, Lord Townsend becomes a new prime minister. And he is going to say, all right, since you didn't like an internal tax, you know, since you don't have direct representation, but you external taxes are okay, I'm going to place external taxes upon the colonies. The Townsend Acts were a series of external taxes. And he's like, you know what? you got to be okay with this because you were the ones who just got done saying it's the internal taxes that are illegal. So I will give you external taxes. Da, da, da. All right. Uh, so they start putting taxes on things like glass, lead, um, tea. These are taxes on goods coming into, right? So these are external taxes. So you can't get mad, it's an external tax. Well, two things happen. Two responses from this. Um, two responses from this. One is um, the Massachusetts Circular Letter. Okay? Um, this is calling on um, England. It's a, it's a letter that's circulating around the colony, specifically New England, and makes its way calling on the king and parliament to repeal the towns and acts. And another one, um, it's going to be another letter, another um, important letter, is from John Dickinson. Does he have like an important word? Probably read the language arts class. Letter from a Pennsylvania farmer. Have you read that yet? It sounds as though yeah. we've read the passage at some point in school. Letter from a Pennsylvania farmer is. It's kind of like a, um, an almost like an anonymous letter from this farmer in Pennsylvania, this average guy, who is explaining why these taxes are unjust, are unjustified. And John Dickinson is not just some ho hum farmer from Pennsylvania, but what he is doing is these are letters and pamphlets and that are circulating to the, the colonies trying to get the colonists to understand why these taxes are not just a bad idea, but inherently um, tyrannical against their freedom, right? Um, so, uh, once again also, um, they start calling for non-importation. So colonies also, not all the colonies, but several colonies begin to use non-importation. Okie dokie. Well, because of the non-importation, and because of these letters circulating, and because of the sense of liberty getting involved, again, with non-importation, um, troops are brought into New England, all right? British soldiers are brought into Boston as a way to try to quell some of the rapscallions who are raising some hullabaloo. These rapscallions are raising some sort of tomfoolery. And if there's anything Amber Devine doesn't like, it's tomfoolery. She told me that before, so Mr. Sarah, I hate tomfoolery. <laughs> Please pass it on. Now, soldiers are, uh, there's a group of soldiers who are um, outside a building in Boston, and they start to get harassed by colonists who don't like them being there. Remember, sanitary neglect was the colonists not being to need to be defended by these soldiers. And now, since the Stamp Act and since the end of the French Indian War, soldiers are more around more. We already have a quartering act, right? And so, what do these colonists begin to do to the soldiers who are standing there outside this building? Throw snowballs. Throw snowballs at them. So, what's wrong with getting snowballs thrown at you? 
there might have been some rock and glass in there. Now, I personally like getting hit in the face by rock and glass. Do you, Alexis? Alexis, of course you do. Everyone likes getting hit in the face. Now, what is the response of these soldiers? One of them fires. And when one fires, several fire, and what results? The Boston Massacre. Right? This, like five people died. The first one was a guy named Crispus Attucks, which um, many revolutionaries call the first, the first uh, casualty of the revolution. Do what? I thought it was the tux. I understand now. Tux is an old one. So, who's Paul Revere? He's a printer. Prince paper, right? He was a silversmith, actually, but he was also a propagandist. And many of you might have seen that wood carving that he made of the, uh, that wood cut out of the uh, massacre, the Boston Massacre, a bunch of bloodthirsty, right, British soldiers firing upon the nice, sweet colonists. So the question is, who's at fault, the colonists or the, or the soldiers? It's not that easy, is it? It's not a bunch of soldiers just start shooting people, right? Were they provoked? Were they not provoked? Who defended these five guys in court? Anyone John know? Adams. John Adams did. It was in Boston, where Adams was from. John Adams, who was a revolutionary, right? This is a this is a patriot, and he decided to defend them because he said, if we do not give these men proper defense, well, that means. A couple bad things about us. First of all, we're not as civilized as we like to presume. That in America, you have the freedom to a, 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 a fair trial. <laughs> These men deserve a fair trial. And the colonies need to understand that in America, justice is blind. We can't be a mob. Order is important. And so he defends them. He's a great attorney, and he went. In fact, they won. They got off. No one served was, was, was killed or executed or even served extra time in the Boston Massacre. They were just sent home to England, these guys were. Okay, so he, he defended the he soldiers. Defended them. Yeah, he defended the soldiers. He wanted, what if it was just a guy who lost on purpose or they just strung these guys up and hung them, hanged them? What might have been the result? The British might have been aggressive to the Americans, right? But if given a fair trial by a jury with a really good attorney representing the accused, can you see how that would show our civility? Today, we often see this, right, when you talk about issues of torture or what American values really are. Many say that we should torture people because we need to get information. Others say that it shows that we're not being civil, right? If we want to truly be civil, it's how you treat people who are at the behest of your government. That is to say, how much, how many rights are you going to extend to people who have the least um, the, the, the least of those to defend themselves? Right? Like for instance, in the 60s, early 60s, if you were poor, you didn't get an attorney, right? Today, you get an attorney even if you can't afford one, right? We'll give you a versus claim, right? We learned about that. Um, but before that, you only got a, a t if you couldn't afford an attorney or poor, you only got one in a capital murder case. Other than that, you had to defend yourself. Right? But because people who are arrested are at the mercy of the government. Well, Adams thought, and it's very American to think, that people who are at the mercy of the government deserve the right to be heard as well as possible. And that's why we get issues of things about torture or what America should do or what America shouldn't do in the face of, you know, some sort of injustice. Okay? Um, what's next? Oh, the towns and acts are repealed. Because of the power of the colonial movement of the Massachusetts Search of the Letter, letter from a Pennsylvania farmer, there's propaganda going around, um, and then the non-importation, <laughs> the Townsend Acts are repealed. Now let me ask you a question. If you're the colonists, what are you learning from all of this? That they can do whatever they want. The colonists have some real influence politically over the parliament, don't they? They've already had a Stamp Act repeal, now they had a Townsend Act repeal. And this is going to be in um, 1770, 1771, and not a lot happens for several years, really except for something called the Gaspy Incident. Is that on there? Yeah. 
the Gatsby was this ship, it was a British ship, that was really, really well known for taking out smugglers. Remember, in America, it was almost like patriotic to be a smuggler, right? To get around the British navigation laws, the molasses act, stuff like that. Well, the Gatsby actually used to really go after smugglers, and it actually, the Sons of Liberty got on it, it ran aground, the Sons of Liberty got on it and burned the ship to the ground. And the British were pissed. But they couldn't find anybody. They couldn't find the guilty parties. They dressed up like Indians when they did it. And nobody was ever um, officially sent to jail for it or tried. But this is really the only incident. Now, what's the problem? If there's really no, really no incidents colony-wide for several years, what do you think the feeling towards Great Britain becomes if there is no incident? Or no acts that they hate. Yeah, they, 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 they stop getting mad, right? That things are getting back to normal. Now remember, <laughs> these people are proud of being British. They don't want, no one's thinking about a revolution yet. No one's thinking about breaking away. But they are thinking about getting these acts done away with. But there is one person, Sam Adams, who wants to keep people amped. And the committees of correspondence is on that, are part of that. Committees of Correspondence is propaganda. It's letters that are circulating for, around the colonies, mostly in New England, keeping people aware of all the things the British are doing that are anti, you know, anti-colony. It's keeping people amped. Now, what is propaganda? Yeah, it's information. It's not necessarily always 100% untrue. But it's information that's meant to spin something in your direction to get people to act, right? A good example, we'll learn about this in, uh, around World War I, we used propaganda because we said the Germans were baby killers. We wanted the people to hate the Germans to fight them, right? And so there are all these posters I'm going to show you of Germans, like with a woman on, his, this German soldier with a woman on his back, right? She's in an all-white dress because she's very virginal and pure. And he has a sword, the sword's bloody, and he's stomping through the water, and there's dead babies all over the place because... Because Germans kill babies, right? That's what Germans do. They kill babies, right? Forget the start of timer. Um, now, do Germans really go around stabbing babies all the time and raping women? I hope not. That's a really mean army. But we tend to have propaganda to make people think that. Do you think in the Middle East there is propaganda against America? Yeah. We have propaganda against people, and they have propaganda against us. And the Committee of Correspondence, how much time is on that? Uh, 12 minutes. Okay. At 15 minutes, can you stop it and it start it again for me? Thank you. Um, I'm a little camera person. I would pay you money, but I spent all of them on cookies. <laughs> I had to use 15 minutes yesterday to pay for my cookies. Um, and so he's trying to keep everybody amped, and finally the shoe drops. Now, how many of you from AP World Civ or just regular World Civ remember a company called the Dutch East India Company? Remember learning about that? Actually, if you've ever seen. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow has actually uh, has been stamped. I remember they had a thing on there, he's been stamped because he's been caught by the Dutch East Indian Company. Well, the British had an East Indian Company too. Guess what it was called? British the British East Indian Company. Was it Indian? Do what? Was it Indian? Well, they operated trading with, um, yeah. The British East Indian Company was having financial trouble, so the British government helped them out, and they said that all Americans had to buy tea for Britain, sold to them by the British East India Company. So, and obviously isn't tea a big deal in the colonies, right? Tea's a big deal. And your tea has to come from the British East India Company. And Americans were pissed about this. You know why Americans were pissed about this, Cole? You know why Americans were angry about this? Does it create a monopoly for the East Indian Company? This tea was cheaper and better than the American tea, and we didn't like that. I hate this inexpensive, really high quality tea. I want crappy, expensive American tea, by God, or I want nothing. That's what Americans said. We don't want your good value. We want crappy.